Frank, throughout the history of human sentient existence, we've always asked the questions, why? What is it all about? In whatever philosophical or religious framework we had, based on whatever we saw in our environment at the time. For the last couple of hundred years, certainly in the last few decades, our appreciation of the universe has expanded so dramatically with cosmological observations. You have pioneered considering the possibility of extraterrestrial intelligence. How does all of that expand humanity's deep desire for some of these fundamental questions? Well, what we have learned of cosmology and really about the origins and evolution of life um, just whet our appetite to understand better why all this happened. Uh, we've come to learn how the universe works, that there are fundamental physical laws that apply all across the universe. And they have led to the very complicated structures which exist, the stars, particularly the planets, and the most complicated thing of all, us. Mm -hmm result the consequences of biology and we have always wondered what has been the history of this whole universe and the life on earth what is that history how did we get to be to where we are today and where are we headed we know we're in an expanding universe we've learned that that was news very recently in accelerating in, in human history and yes, and we, we now find the universe accelerating. People wonder, is it going to decelerate, to collapse back to a point? Does this oscillate over and over? These are some of the prime questions of cosmology. Uh, we've learned, I think, something very fascinating, which is that we live in a universe which has in it active what we call the anthropic principle which is that the laws of physics and particularly the fundamental constants in the universe like the charge of the electron, the speed of light, uh, the Planck constant, the, the Planck constants that govern all the physical phenomena have to be just what they are or there could be no life. Change them just a little bit, no life. What does that tell us? Well, to me it tells us that we lucked out we happen to be in the universe where those constants were right. But there's no reason why the universe should have exactly that set of constants. They could have, <clears throat> there could be other values for those constants and we would have universes that are totally dark or universes that had no galaxies or galaxies that had just one huge, brilliant star with no planets at all. We have, the, we have the universe where the constants allow there to be stars with planets and biology and water, all the stuff of life. And <clears throat> how do we explain that? The, there are numerous explanations. The one I think is most believable to me is that there are many, many universes, each one with a different set of constants. We happen to be in the one which, where the constants were just right for life. So we're here to observe that we're in the universe that where the constants are just right for life. It wasn't, which is not, not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence yeah. at all. It had to be that way. But what of all those other universes that are probably dark, with no life? There's no way we can know of them because by definition, universes do not communicate with one another. They're they could well be out there in enormous numbers. No thinking creatures, no one contemplating the philosophical implications of their darkness, uh, except us. And we're not even sure they're there. And in a way, that, that this can drive you crazy pretty <laughs> fast. Uh, but the, the final answer to, not the answer, but the thing that comes out of this is that the more we've learned about cosmology, the more complicated the questions has become. The whole system is much more sophisticated, much more uh, rich in detail and in puzzles than we ever imagined. The greatest question, which is the why question, I don't think can be touched by science. Science can tell us how the universe works in, in great detail. And we've learned that the universe is very complicated with its subatomic nuclei, 
the complicated molecules of biology, all of that. Science can tell you every detail of all of that. But lying beneath all of this is that long held old question of why. And I don't think science can ever answer that question. If science can't answer that question, can any other methodology, philosophical, religious, can they even try, or would that be just wishful thinking? To me as a scientist, it's probably wishful thinking. Because to me, the way you understand things is to observe and deduce from the observations the answer to your questions. But when it comes to the question of why, there is no data, and I don't know of any way to get the data. And so I think it may be, as disappointing as it may seem, beyond our reach. You've pioneered humanity's desire to find out if there are other intelligent civilizations in the universe. Would there be any possibility that if we did contact some of those civilizations, they might have some fresh ideas on the subject? I'm sure that any civilization we contact will have all kinds of fabulous, remarkable, provocative, exciting ideas about f philosophy and science that just have not occurred to us. We're not smart enough yet. And this will be one of the most exciting parts of uh, uh, contacting other civilizations. They've got billions of years of thought and experiments to, to inform us with. And there will be rich new ideas for sure, ones beyond our present wildest imagination.